Welcome back to the book of Exodus. We're in chapter 29, verses 43 and 46, closing out this chapter. And uh, there's sort of a sum summation here. All these details we've gone into for many days here about consecrating this and consecrating that. And actually, we're going to get back into some sanctuary furniture we haven't seen yet that hasn't been addressed. But, but today we're looking at sort of, a, this is sort of bringing this to a conclusion. Let's read the text. And I think you'll be able to see, you know, there's kind of a summation going on here. Uh, it's to help the reader, to help the one who hears recognize this is the end of a section and something pretty, you know, we're pulling it all together significantly. All right, here we go, 43. I will meet there with the sons of Israel, and it shall be consecrated by my glory. I will consecrate the tent of meeting and the altar. I will also consecrate Aaron and his sons to minister as priests to me. I will dwell among the sons of Israel and will be their God. They shall know that I am the Lord, their God, who brought them out of the land of Egypt, that I might dwell among them. I am the Lord, their God. Okay, so you can tell there, there's sort of a wrap-up, kind of a summary phase going on. I'm going to dwell among them. Remember, we had this back earlier uh, in Exodus 25, verse 8, you know, make, make me a sanctuary that I may dwell among you. And now we're getting all the particulars laid out. And here we have sort of a, a summation again. We're going to do, we're doing these offerings. We've talked about this. Now we're talking about consecrating the priest. And now he's summing it all back up. I have a little note here from uh, Stewart's commentary. 631 is the page I thought was poignant here. Virtually all those gathered at Sinai had grown up as polytheists, pantheists, and syncretists in Egypt, just as they would have grown up anywhere else in the ancient world, for that matter. Uh, they had little difficulty in believing that there could be a god named Yahweh, who was one of many gods and goddesses, but to believe that he was the only god, superior to the most powerful gods they had once believed in, the creator of the world and their creator, through many miracles as a people, that was harder for them. And yes, if you think about that, if these people are coming out of Egypt where they are, they are polytheists, there are many gods, pantheists, God is in everything, and syncretists, oh yeah, we just, we're just, oh, here's another god, let's add that to our collection here, you know, I've got some blue ones, I've got some yellow ones, I've got some green ones, and, and I've got an orange one. So you've got all these gods, and that kind of, that approach to things was, the, the monotheism, what, what God gave us in the scriptures was something Utterly different, utterly, totally different. The idea that instead of many gods, there was really one. And not only that, is, he, is there just one, but there is one personal God. Uh, this is a God who loves us and wants good things for us, and he's a person. We can talk to him directly. Yeah, so this is, this is very different from what these people grew up in in Egypt, where you know, the Nile River was a god, and there was a frog god, and the beetle god, and every kind of every kind of snake god, and, and so on. So God is kind of wrapping this all up, but he's saying, I'm going to be their God. And, and what he's done here and is completing here with the book of Exodus is he's, he's throwing out all the fake gods. They don't exist. They're not real. It can't help me mentally to be saying, okay, well, yeah, so uh, the one God thing is pretty good, but, you know, I'm not sure about that. I'm going to think, I'll, but I am going to make some reforms here. Let me... I'm going to move from uh, believing in 87 gods, but I'm going to bring it down to, um, you know, my five favorites. That's not good enough. God is the one and only. He is the, oh, there is only one God, and he's bringing them together, and he's changing their, their very mindset. There is one God. I'm it. You are my people. You are my only son. You people are as, the, you're my son. I'm going to be your protector, and you're going to be like my child. This is a very unique and special and precious relationship. And so God is pulling it all together for them. And these people who are struggling, you know, some of them, you know, with this, uh, but still God is giving them good things and showing them the truth about himself to these, uh, these degraded slaves that are coming out of polytheism in Egypt. So God is patient and careful, but also has to be pretty definite sometimes. Uh, we are pretty slipshod today. We're not very, you know, we think we're way advanced from these people that we're reading about. But uh, compared to them, we are, a lot of times, we are the infants. We are the people who have a lot of reforming to do. So let's kind of make sure that we're on God's team and we pay close attention. When God says, uh, this is the way things are, we need to take, we need to lay hold on that and live by that. And we can be his servants and his children, his sons and daughters too. God bless you. See you back tomorrow for the beginning of chapter 3-0 in Exodus' 40 chapters.
Thank you.